Let's learn about the discrete time convolution sum and also take a look at a numerical example. Discrete time convolution applies to LTI systems. LTI is an abbreviation for linear time invariant systems. Let's explore this concept in a little more detail. I have a system with an input sequence x of n that produces an output sequence y of n. The system has impulse response h of n. Now let's consider what this impulse response means. If I were to apply a delta function, delta of n on the input, that's a single sample with value 1 at time n equals 0. That produces a sequence h of n. If I delay this impulse by one place, delta of n minus 1, because the system is time invariant, that means we get the same impulse response, but just delayed by the same amount. Now, the entire sequence x of n has values that I'll pick out here specifically, such as x of 0. At n equals 5, we have x of 5. And back here at n equals minus 4, we would have the value x of minus 4. I can take each one of these values in the input sequence and multiply it by an appropriate delta function. That is, a delta function that's shifted to the same place as the sample value. This way I can view x of n as being composed of a large sum of scaled and shifted impulses. For example, delta of n plus 4 is scaled by x of minus 4. Here at n equals 0, we have x of 0 times delta of n. Here's another example, x of 5 times the delta located at n equals 5. Now, y of n is likewise a large sum of values. The scaling factor remains the same, but now delta located at n equals minus 4 causes the sequence h advanced by four places. In a similar way, x of 0 multiplies the original impulse response and x of 5 multiplies h of n minus 5. We then see that we have a sum of shifted and scaled impulse responses. Now let me generalize that as follows. I'll write this out as the sum running from i equals minus infinity to positive infinity. I've picked out three specific values here. These would be example values for x of i. We then see we multiply by h of n, but with the appropriate shift amount added. And that shift amount is minus i. We call this the convolution sum, and it applies to any LTI system. Let's take a look at a numerical example. Here I have a sequence x composed of four values. This value with the underline denotes the location of n equals zero in the sequence. The impulse response of our system looks like this, and I have also indicated the point at which n equals zero. We want to find the convolution of x and h. The asterisk is the convolution operator. I'll begin by writing my impulse response on top, and then underneath that I will write my in input sequence x. And I'm taking care here to make sure that I align vertically the n equals zero points. Now I'm going to multiply these together. I've got 4 times 1, 4 times 2, and 4 times negative 1. Now what I've just written down amounts to the value x of 0, which is 4, times the impulse response, 
with no shift. This would be h of n. Right, so we see that as being the case of i equals zero. All right, let's move to the next value. We have one times one, one times two, and then one times negative one. This corresponds to the case of x of one times the shifted version of the impulse response. So that's why we have this stagger going here. We need to have the shifted impulse response. All right, let's keep this up. Two times the shifted impulse response looks like this, and then five times looks like that. Now, according to our convolution sum, we need to add all of these results together. So I'm adding column wise here. There's another eight and there's minus five. This sequence is my result for y of n. We also need to make note of the n equals zero point and that would be located right here. And that's the convolution sum.